Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel today, I want to show you linear interpolation. So I was working on my app, you human, and I decided that I want to start sharing processes that I worked on and tips and tricks that also helped me in the process of building a purely Python app. So linear interpolation, if you're not familiar with the concept, just think of it as a straight line. And to show you an example, we have two points. We have a start point and then we have an end point. If we were to draw a line in between these two points, this would be our line. Linear interpolation is a start location to an end location, but with a smooth movement. If we wanted to draw a, a vertical, right? It'd be the same thing. Now, what happens when you call both of them? You would get a in-between line that goes towards your point. So again, this is your end. Why is this important? Applying both of these together allows you to actually go in any direction that you need to go, not just horizontal or vertical, but you can go diagonal. Okay. So let's start with building first our linear interpolation. We'll build it down here. So let's first define the linear interpolation as a function inside of the parameters. Like I showed you with the paint graph, let's define our parameters. The first one one's going to be a start position. In most of my videos, I do like to clarify that you always want to define a type. It's easier to look over in the bug as you're working through your code. Next, we'll add our in position, which again, is going to be a float. And lastly, the current time or the progression, we can just say T for now, which again is a float. This entire function is going to return a float. Let's make sure to declare that it does return a float. Now we'll go ahead and add our distance, which is a float. So the distance is going to be the in position minus the start position. So if you're currently at your start position and you minus that from the in position, that is the distance that you need to get to that said location. And you can continuously calculate to see how far the distance is. So if you were at a position of two and your end position was 10, 10 minus two is eight, which means you have eight remaining. Now we'll go ahead and define our linear T again, time, or you can say progression is going to be equal to T. That's going to be our position from zero to one. If you haven't made a game, but you've at least played games, a good example is thinking about a health bar. In games, you have zero to a hundred for your health, but with sliders, which is used to control the health bar, they usually take numbers between zero and one. Well, then you would ask, how do you convert zero to a hundred to zero and one? So if your current health was 20 out of a hundred, if you take 20 and divide it by a hundred, that would give you 0.2. If you were at 40, divide that by a hundred, that would give you 0.4. If you were at 60, divide that by a hundred, that would give you 0.6 until you get to one. So zero to one. That is the same for this linear interpolation that we're using. It's going to be the value between zero and one. Finally, to get the position, because remember the distance is not the position. The distance is how far you are from your end position, but position is exactly where you are. So if we take our start position plus the distance times the linear T, which again is our progression, that gives us our position. Because remember our start position could be zero. Let's say our end position was a hundred, but linear T would say if we're at zero point four, then we're at 40. That is our current position out of a hundred. So zero to a hundred current position 40 because 0.4 would be 40. Linear T is the driving factor of your position. Without linear T, you would always be at your start position. And then we just return that position. Now, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to drop a like. And also if you want to, it would be nice to see you subscribe. So now let's go ahead and set this up inside of the main. We'll go ahead and define our start position and our end position. Next, we need our duration. Duration is gonna be the time that it takes to finish our linear interpolation. So with the duration, it's how long it takes to get from your start to end. Do we wanna take two seconds to get from zero to 100? Do we wanna take five seconds? Let's start off with a duration of three seconds. And again, we're gonna define all of these as float. Now we need a start time. For our start time, it's going to be a float. We're gonna use monotonic from the time library. The reason we're using time.monotonic is because it's a time that's unaffected by the system clock or time zone. So no matter what we change our time to, any updates to our time, it will not affect this specific method. Now there is the perf counter, but if you're running something for a long period of time, there's a possible chance that it can be affected. Just think of time.monotonic as a way to measure elapsed time without being affected by the clock itself or the internal clock or time zone zones or anything like that. It's unaffected at all. If you're a network person, TCP would be our monotonic. UDP would be our time perf counter. Monotonic is guaranteed. It's more reliable while our time perf counter is faster, a little less reliable. So let's go ahead and define our while loop. We'll say while time dot monotonic minus start time is less than duration, then go ahead and perform the loop. Remember how I said that monotonic is a way to measure elapsed time. Our start time is when we started counting and our duration is how long we want it to go for. And so that we can see what's happening with the time dot monotonic, now you do need the time library, which was important when we were calling time dot monotonic, but let's go ahead and run it. 
Let's take a look at this number. It's just a repeated number, correct? Well, it looks like it because of how fast it's calling. Then we go roughly to the top here and we start scrolling down and paying attention to the 359 part, right? Specifically 359. It goes to 375, then it goes to 39, then 406. So it's like we're counting up, right? The number is only going up. But our start time would be this 359, this full number, of course, but this whole entire start time is going to be what we're minusing by. Remember that this time.monotonic is the time that we're printing right now. If you want an idea what it looks like minus the start time, we can do that as well. You can see that we are counting from 0 to 2.98, which is close as we're going to get with this specific call to so three seconds. With that in mind, we have finished our time measuring method. Now we can run our linear interpolation based on the duration. Next, we need to get our elapsed time, which is going to be the current time in loop. What we outputted in our last run is the elapsed time, how much time has passed. So we'll store that elapsed time as a float, which is equal to time.monotonic minus our start time. Now we have that stored in a variable called elapsed time. Now we know what time we're at throughout our entire loop. Next would be to get the progress. So let's comment this out so that we have a good example of what it means. To get the time or progress is to get that decimal number between 0 and 1. An example of elapsed time would be if our elapsed time was 2 seconds and our duration was 10 seconds. We divide our 2 seconds by 10 and it gives us 0 0.2. So to write that out is going to be progress which is going to be a float is equal to the elapsed time divided by duration. Finally, the last part that we need is going to be the current position of the object. We can print out the progress to see exactly what it's doing. Now you will have to replay the video or slow it down if you really want to pay attention to that. But if you did notice, because we can't go all the way to the beginning, but we are counting up in decimal points all the way up to 0.99. At least at the beginning of this log is 0.94 to 0.99. Now that we have everything that we need for our linear interpolation function to work, we can go ahead and get our current position from the linear interpolation. So we can go and say the current position of the object, which is going to be current position defined as a float. Our start position is going to be our start of zero. Our end position is going to be in, which is 100. And our time example is going to be equal to progress. And that will give us our current position. Let's go ahead and print out our current position. And what we have here, again, you can replay or slow down a video, but you can see that it was counting from our zero to 100. We don't have it all, but we have enough. If we wanted to make that to 200, over three seconds is going to go up to 200. So now we can define whatever end and start that we need. Okay, that is the full linear done. What can you do with it? Well, there's many things that you can do with it, but the one that I personally had to use it for was mouse movement because my QHuman app is an auto clicker. To expand upon this, let's go ahead and import the mouse controller from the Pi input library. Then right above it, we'll go ahead and define our mouse move. We'll go ahead and create our mouse controller. Then we'll set the controller position to the the x and y arguments that are passed to our parameter here. Back down in our while loop, let's go ahead and set up our x to be equal to our current position, which is the current position of where we are in our linear interpolation. And for now, we'll set our y to zero because we don't have a y just yet. We only have one position. And if you notice it, we are actually missing something. And it's an issue that you wouldn't notice unless you do trial and error and really debug your app. Let's go ahead and run it. And we had a very slow movement, but it was smooth. And actually, you might not be able to see it. So let's change our values up a little bit. We'll start at 500 and end at 900. And we'll set our Y to be 500 so that it is placed more so center. And we'll run that again, kind of in the area that you can see. And we get a smooth movement. We can obviously swap this around and actually move from a X position. And if you remember the graph, now that we can move horizontal and vertical, from the graph, if you call these at the same time, then you would move diagonal. So let's do that. So to give it a real application feel, we'll duplicate these, create a start X and a start Y, an index and an NY. And let's make our start Y 200 and our NY 600, which it's closer to the middle of the screen. The only change that we need to make here is calling our linear interpolation for both our X and Y. So if we duplicate it, then we can define the first one as current position X and our second as current position Y. And then we get our start X and our index along with our start Y and our NY. And now we have linear interpolation between our X and our Y. Well, now you might be asking, well, how do you put these together? And at this point, it's just plug and play. We add in our current position X, and then we add in our current position Y. And we can now run this, and we have a nice diagonal linear interpolation movement with our mouse. Now, the issue that I described earlier, it works just fine as long as we have the time for it. If we go down to one second, you see that we get a faster movement. If we go down to 0 0.4, it's almost instant. Let's go down to 0.2. It's practically instant. We go down to 0.1.
But what happens if we go lower? If we go to 0.05, it was like a flash. And if we go to 0.03, you notice something there? I'm gonna keep running a couple of times. Let me know, I'm not moving my mouse. But if we go back to 0.04, the mouse is moving, but not to where it should be moving until we're at 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is the only section that runs right. And that's because it's ending so fast that it's not able to fully run the mouse movements. So to fix this issue, if someone wants to set it that low, after our while loop is done, we need to call move mouse again. And what we'll call in this move mouse is going to be the end X and end Y. So after the entire function is over, we want to set our position to the end position. So now if we set this back down to 0.03, no matter what, it gets set to its end position. To the point of 0.01, it just puts it right there. I can move the mouse all the way up to the top and it's just, it's instant. If we go straight to zero as well, again, it's instant. All right, so you have effectively built linear interpolation. You can build upon this to make a quadratic smoothness and a cubic smoothness. If you go to your linear T and raise it to the power of two, you see how we had a more natural look and we can compare it back to the linear. Linear felt more start to finish. Quadratic has a slow start and kind of builds momentum. If you do to the third, this is more so of a cubic. It starts off extremely slow and it gains acceleration. Let's look at that again, really slow, acceleration. Comparing that to the beginning, which is completely linear. You can make modifications and go a little bit further to other types of easing. I would advise searching up the different types of easings or smooth formulas, that would be a good search term, to see what you can come up with. But if you are curious about the Qhuman app, a major release is about to be released either this week or next. I'll make a video of when the release is out and all the changes and features that I've added to the app. If you're interested in joining a discord about content creators, programmers, musicians, artists, all of them working together in collaboration, let me know in the comment section below or reach out to me on my Twitter, which is linked on my home profile, and I'll get you a link over to the discord. If there was anything that you saw that I did wrong or you can do better, leave it down in the comment section below. I am no expert. I'm learning as well, and we're trying to build a community so that we can all grow and learn together.